Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, we had a tiny little technical difficulty starting today, but uh, really glad you could all be with us. And uh, yeah, how you doing today? Hi to Silvano Raffo and uh, Alan Haggard, Michael Lottis, Kristen Berardi. By the way, it was Kristen's birthday two days ago, so um, I think we're going to have to play a, a happy birthday for Kristen. Happy birthday, Kristen. Uh, Lori Wilson, Ron Rosenthal, Alan Haggard. Again, I already, I already said hi to Alan. Hi, Jonathan Glass. Um, yeah, and Stevens, Grace Chu. Great to have you all with us. Um, I want to welcome one of my favorite musicians, uh, somebody you know well, uh, the wonderful Jorge Roder. Hi, Jorge. Hello. <laughs> How are you? There we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I wanted to tell you that I cannot see you right now. Oh, yeah. Well, I can, if fix, that's, I can fix that. If you can fix that, that would be better. We've done this before where I cannot see Dan and then they didn't know. And it worked out. There you go. There you go. All so, right. Everybody can see everybody. Daniele Prolong um, says, hi, Jorge. Hello. Carol McGoffin says, hi, Jorge. Um, yeah, everybody says hi to Jorge. Hi, everyone. Um, Marila Reese. Marila says, hi from Flagstaff. So good to see Jorge and Dan together again. Thank well, you. Yeah, it's always a good day when I get to play with Jorge. So, um, yeah, why don't we dive in and play some music? Um, how about, um, how about a standard, uh, maybe darn that dream or sure. no, uh, how about body and soul? Body and soul. Yeah. You know, um, Lee Konitz left us, uh, just about a year ago. And so I wanted to play some, uh, some really standardy standards today in his honor. All right. Body Sounds and good. soul is one that I played with him virtually on every single gig I played. Remember then, I, 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 uh, and I, I sent you this photo of you playing with Lee at Newport. Yeah. And, you know, Lee had this uh, um, idea that he wanted to play as acoustic as possible. And I was at the back of an outdoor tent. So I could, you really have to strain yourself to listen. And he played Body and Soul. And I think maybe that time, I'm trying to remember, because I think he scattered a solo. I'm sure he probably did. Yeah, yeah. He, he did that <laughs> on the regular. But we all had to be super quiet to listen. Yeah, you know, even yeah, the crashing yeah. waves—you could hear the waves more than the. <laughs> right. Yeah, Lee had this thing where he just loved to turn amplification off as much as possible, including on outdoor gigs, which is just insane. There was one time we played uh, at the Charlie Parker Jazz Festival in, in New York City, and I literally was like chasing him around the stage with the mic, just <laughs> trying to get him to play into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Here we go. Body and Soul with Jorge Roder.
Yeah, we're having some some uh, some issues today. You know, it's interesting. I feel like the closer uh, that we get to to live performance coming back, and <laughs> the the more unstable this this stuff becomes in some ways, uh, which is you know right on time, really. Uh, I'm I have no idea what just happened, but I actually lost sound from Jorge, which is a pretty unusual thing. I haven't seen that happen before. So uh, yeah, bear, bear with me for a moment here. Let me see what I can do to fix this. Um, yeah, so first of all, Daniela is saying, Dan, you're still not synced. So that's, that's a problem. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. Um, yeah, I think my computer might be actually overheating a little bit, but that hasn't happened in a while. Ooh, I think Jorge's back. <laughs> hey, Jorge. Oh. Do you have any idea what happened? Uh, one second. There we go. All right. Do you have any idea what happened just now? Nope. My, ja like, like my your... jack stopped, though. Oh, wow. Whatever happens, my... You know, it is getting warmer, and I wonder if, uh, if our computers are overheating. Huh. Not impossible on my end. Let me see. Yeah, it's on the warmer side. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna try this a little more, and uh, if it keeps uh, working really badly, this is gonna be a solo show, which is, uh, you know, always a shame to not get to play with with Jorge. But uh, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also my computer seems okay. I think now we're back in sync. Maybe. My computer was definitely overheating. Yeah. So, okay. Well, sorry guys. Tell me if I'm synced now. I think I should be synced now. Yes. Okay. So maybe we're back in business. Who knows? Um, we're going to try this again. I was having a great time playing Body yeah. and Soul with Jorge. So, hey, Colin Stranahan. Really wonderful drummer is joining us. Thank you. Uh, Daniela Prolong suggests ice blocks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna bring Jorge back uh, visually as well. Um, here we go. There he is. Hello again. All right. Well, um, should we play something else? <laughs> sure. Why, why don't we do Darn That Dream? Darn That Dream. Yes. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, things should be working as normal, but it is warmer. So maybe that's the issue. Okay, here we go. Darn that dream. Again, this is a song I've played millions of times with, with Lee Konitz, and this is going to be in his honor. Do you want to bring it in? Yeah.
Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Woo. Beautiful outro there. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> beautiful, to, beautiful to play with you always, man. Yeah. Such a such a joy, really. Likewise, um, man. Actually, there was a question for you. Uh, Ron Rosenthal asks, Jorge has such a sweet tone. Can he tell us about his instrument? Oh, um, yeah, sure. Um, this is a double bass. <laughs> it's a... It's a <laughs> It's a Hox, uh, which is a British maker from early 1900s. I believe that this base is w was built in around 1905, um, and it was modeled uh, after a an Italian shape of base that became very popular around that time. That was th this base is unusually large mm. and this these shoulders are some of the largest shoulders in a base um, and they they were very popular because size was equated to loudness at the time there were there were no other you know the the technology wasn't uh, there to know that if you put certain kind of kinds of strings it, it, it becomes louder or you know if it's set up in a particular way or the the top is just the right um, uh, uh, depth or, or thickness. You know, was that thickness or thickness? Thank yeah. you. The right thickness, then you can get a louder bass. It doesn't have to be necessarily bigger. Size do size does make a difference in, in some cases, but all these other things need to be there. Mm. But um, and we're talking orchestral bases. Yes, right? we're talking right. orchestral. This is like people just trying to have a big sound exactly in a, in, a, sound in, the in the bass section in the orchestra. Right, exactly. Right. Um, but that also kind of got translated into the jazz sense later too like a lot of people wanted these bases to play in big bands mm. uh as a matter of fact if i i don't know if this is true or not but i've heard that they required this kind of bass a hawks in the writer for the jazz at lincoln center orchestra really the, yeah the winton orchestra like, like if you're trapped when they tour it needs to be a hawks huh. wow yeah um so anyway, this this bass is set up um, with the quintessential uh, jazz bass strings, the domestic spiral chord vike. For anyone there that is a bass player and knows about bass, these are the basically the standard, the golden standard of, of strings. And I and I have had a torrential love hate relationship with these strings over the course of twenty five years, yeah. uh, and but I've you know, it's a, it's now, a, it's now a really long, long-term thing that I, that I come to cherish. As a matter of fact, I put these strings right, uh, j just today, I put them back because I had to do this recording that was only arco, and I had to do arco tango, which it's pretty hard to play on these strings. So I put these other strings, these classical strings that are, were, were very good. I just, I just had them right here. As a matter of fact, this whole set of strings, hmm. they are, um, expensive <laughs> and they are um, you know, somewhat hard to get. So they're, they're special Arco strings? Yeah, they're special. They're uh, Pirastro Flexocord Premium. For anybody wondering, Arco this is means very, very, with the bow. Yeah, with the bow. Arco means with the bow. I'm sorry. You need to do like a <laughs> translator for all the bass yeah. nerd stuff that I say. Um, so I just took these strings off and then put my Tomastics um, back on and I just love getting back to it. It's like kind of, kind of coming home. Uh, I was practicing earlier today, and I was just like, oh, it feels so good to play again these strings. So thank mm -hmm. you for that comment about the sweet sound. I'm glad that, you know, it, it comes out that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you. Um, actually, there's a follow-up comment. Uh, Joyce Glasgow asks, is that physically more difficult because of the broader distance across the top in juxtaposition to arm placement? Yes, the answer to that is yes, it is more difficult. Uh, I have to basically move a little more and curve my back a little more. I suffer from back problems all of, you know, but from uh, uh, early, early 2020. Luckily, I've changed the way I play and I'm doing a little better in that sense. Uh, but yes, it is harder. If I had a smaller, a smaller base all around, it would be easier. Mm. But 
then one sacrifice a sound for you know uh, playability sometimes and yeah. in this case that's that's true yeah Silvano Raffo says Arco is clear for me learn some Italian people <laughs> um, yeah. should we play um, a tune of mine yes there was one uh, that I wrote back in February I wrote it February 8th that I think I've only played once. And uh, I think it's kind of a nice song. It's an A-flat minor, which is, uh, as you all know, um, what you get when you drop a uh, grand piano down a mine shaft. Jen <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dutour says, yoga, Jorge. Among other things, but yeah. yeah. And uh, we're going to play it. I think Joyce Glasgow named this one Silver Beam. Here we go.
Yeah, man. Gorge. Yeah, right. Nice, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a fun one, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I could. Uh, I wasn't sure where to end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I, I feel like I need to. I need to write an ending. Maybe it shouldn't end. You know? Maybe it should never end. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Daniele Pralong says that song sure goes places on both instruments. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Cameron Krug says, "Bravo, love the sharp four ending." I love the. I love it when the mus musicians are like, "Oh yeah, sharp four. Um, yeah, Joyce Glasgow says, "Silver, silver, beaming through an open window, shining down on the bass strings, reflecting, flashing a mirror of moonlight. Silent reverie, deep tones, vibrating in richness in the dark of the night, with a silver beam as a grounding point in the black stillness." Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Kristen Berardi says, can you please send me this one, Dan? Yeah, Kristen, anything you want. Let's play it. Let's play it together. That'd be great. Um, Jorge, I feel like playing something up, man. I'm sorry. We I feel again? like playing something up. Yeah. Um, how about. How about um, bouncing with Bud? Sure. All right, Bud Powell tune. I think I've played, yeah, I've played this one for you before, but it's been a long time. Bouncing with Bud.
<laughs> yeah, all right, man. That solo was nasty. Oh, man, nasty. Man. Woo! Yeah, that was... <laughs> man, I feel like that's like that makes the the whole effort worth it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Sally Sing, Spritz man. says, wow, Sing. you guys make me want to hop on a plane and fly to New York City. <laughs> and then watch it from a hotel and, or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then watch it from the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man, that was fun. Mm. Let's play this Pat Metheny tune. Yeah. Um, this is one that, uh, that I played duo with uh, Antonio Sanchez, who's uh, obviously has played a lot with Pat Metheny. Um, and actually, I think Antonio had never played it before, wow. which is kind of amazing. But it's one of my favorite mm. compositions by Pat Metheny, and it's called um, We Had a Sister. <laughs> David Salomonis, who's a really wonderful classical pianist in Paris, he said, that was great and sounded great with the birds outside my window. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all about bird and the birds. Because this is jazz. <laughs>
A beaut. Beautiful. Likewise, man. Yeah. You really know how to play that tune. I kind of need to learn it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel a bit the same. It's it's a it's a tune that you can get really deep yeah. into. Um, I want to. But great to play it. Um, yeah. Um, so I think I, I've told uh, some of you that Nelly Prolong, by the way, says you two need to record this. Um, and Isa Renardi says this one and the previous one and all the others too. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> um, some more instant poetry from Joyce Glasgow. She says, We had a sister. Her hair was black as coal. Her eyes shone steely blue, like ice piercing a frozen sea. A look like Vivian Lay. Hair in tossed waves. Her expressions petulant, yet alluring. An apparition who disappeared into the mist of London Bridge at midnight. We had a sister in our dreams. Amazing. Bye. Amazing. Um, anyway, I was going to say, I, I, I've mentioned to, to you guys before that I have this very exciting gig uh, this Wednesday, uh, day after tomorrow, with uh, Renee Fleming, uh, with Bill Frizzell, and with Christian McBride. We're playing quartet at The Shed in New York City. It's been sold out for ages, but, um, but it's incredible to play a live concert uh, again. This is going to be in a space that seats like 900 people. There are going to be 150 people there. Um, and, um, <clears throat> um, and also, it's just super exciting to me because these are some of my favorite musicians in the world. So um, regarding that gig, one of the songs that we're going to play is one that I've never played before. Um, it's called, what is it called? Hard Times. Hard Times. Uh, which is a very, very old song. Um, by Stephen Foster. And uh, I have a chart here that was written out by Bill Frizzell. And um, I think we're going to, um, to play that for you. Uh, yeah, and Carol McGoffin points out that it's not being live streamed, unfortunately. Uh, I think actually Joyce Glasgow asked the venue and they said they're looking into it for future shows but not this one unfortunately um, anyway we're gonna play hard times for you right now by stephen foster
Oh man, that was fun. Yeah. That's like the, I think the arguably the simplest tune I've ever played um, on, the, on these live streams. Wow. It's amazing how much he does with basically three chords, right? Bill is the master of, uh, of interpreting music that, you know, like he really gets depth out of simplicity yeah so amazingly yeah it's really amazing it's really amazing when when bill plays this this like old simple music it mm -hmm. just never sounds simplistic you know big lesson yeah yeah hardest thing <laughs> you know there's that album um by red mitchell called simple isn't easy i don't know i don't know yeah it's on sunnyside it's a nice album he sings and 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 plays a bunch of songs that he wrote oh, words and lyrics to are you a red mitchell fan by the way i only checked him out as a student to check out his like tuning he had like a the special yeah you know he tuned like a cello mm -hmm. you did a fifth tuning yeah yeah the fifth tuning mm -hmm. and i um only for educational purposes i didn't really really try to get into his vibe you know mm. just the technical thing of moving like a cello you know? gotcha yeah yeah um i should though. you know the album with lee actually no oh man it's one of my favorite albums of lee's it's, it's just duet it's just duet um i can't quite remember what it's called now i think it's just the name of one of the standards okay. uh that's on it and uh man it is beautiful it's like truly two masters at the top of their game mm. like every note is in the right place it's, it's Believe it. pretty amazing yeah red mitchell and, and lee konitz highly recommended um yeah um man well this time always flies by with you man it's oh man amazing <laughs> but uh shall we play one last one let's do it man upper yeah upper what you, you have any ideas mm. you know inner urge yeah oh my god do you remember how we used to play that like yeah. 20 years ago i know <laughs> man i hope i can play that i know it's a it's a it's a it's a tall order in a in a yeah. you know like an unprepared in a, in a setting really long time. <laughs> uh this is this is an amazing composition by joe henderson <clears throat> one of the great great jazz saxophonists and composers i'd say um and uh this is going to be a stark contrast to what we just played. Yeah. <laughs> let's I try hope, making. I hope, I, hope I, hope I can play the head, man. Let's 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 see if we can make this sound easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good luck. Um, okay. Inner urge. Okay. I, I I can play the the first part of the melody with you. If that's uh, of any help. Okay. I think I got the first part, man. <laughs> I think that's a, that's not the hard part. <laughs> I'm working on I'm working on the on the second half. It's just like you know. Yeah. Not, not up to speed yet. Uh, Michael Loftus says that was beautiful and Frank Geyer is gorgeous. Thanks so much you guys. Great Thank to have you, you with us. Um, okay, here's Inner Urge by Joe Henderson.
<laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. That was that was a beautiful solo, man. Thanks, man. Contrasts. Contrasts. Talk about yes. contrasts. Yes, 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 yes. Um, <laughs> Mar Mar Marila Reese says, and the fingers fly faster than this live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I'm having such a great time playing, Jorge. Likewise, man. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know how you feel, but maybe if people really insist, maybe we would play one, one more. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. What do you think, yeah? You don't mind? We're already all set up, man. We're already <laughs> set up. Maybe we should make some more music. Do people have a request? Um... Yeah, that was a great call, actually. Do you remember we used to play that in nine? It was like... Oh, yeah! Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you used to do this crazy Arco thing. Oh, wow, right. Um, Isa, <laughs> Hardy, Isa Renardi says, we insist. Frank Schumann um, requests Oleo. Oh, wow. Um, Marila Reese requests Skylark. Uh, Daniela Prolong Dexterity, which I don't know. Wow. Um, uh, what do you think? I feel like it's between Scar Skylark and uh, Oleo. Because we did already um, Bouncing with Bud. Mm hmm. I would I would say maybe Skylark would be the better. Let's do Skylark. Savannah so Rappos says, "What about an El Suelo Mio?" Too? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll email you the chart. <laughs> Thank you, Silvano. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's do um. Let's do Skylark. Um. E flat or D flat? Mm, e flat, right? E flat? E flat? Yeah. E flat? Yeah. Cool. All right.
Yeah, man. Beautiful playing, man. <laughs> too. Yeah, man. What a pleasure. Just a total joy playing with you, man. Same here, man. Uh, Gender Tour says, absolutely phenomenal. Skylark, one of my favorites. Can't wait to see what the Lonely Giraffe, giraffe a.k.a. Silvano Raffo, drew, accompanied by this beauty. Thanks, you two. Well, thank you. Um, Marila Reese says, soaring and grounding like meditation. Thank you, DT and JR, for this encore, for giving us the opportunity to dwell in you and our hearts on yet another Monday. Um, yeah. Thanks to you all for joining us. Um, truly, truly um, a pleasure playing with the great Jorge Roder. As I've mentioned many times before, he has a really beautiful solo record uh, out called El Suelo Mio. So if you haven't heard it, uh, definitely check it out. It's Thank gorgeous. Um, also, if you would like to support uh, these live streams and especially the, the duo ones, um, please head to dantepfer.com slash donate. Uh, and there are lots of options there for, um, there it is. For, uh, for donating if you'd like to support. Uh, I also have, um, I have a Zoom meeting coming up with uh, my supporters on Patreon. I think that's um, a week from yesterday. Yeah, uh, if I remember right. I announced it on Patreon anyway. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. And um, we'll also see you all next Monday uh, for another one of these. Monday live streams. Daniele Prolong says, now go and stretch, Jorge. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm heading to. Yeah. All right. Thanks to you <laughs> Thank all. You. Thanks to Jorge Roder. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.